Before you hear the rest of the podcast, you have some time to look at questions 15 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 15 to 20. The sheep market is one of the main centres for art and history in the whole of the country. If you look at our map, you'll see some of the main attractions there. Most visitors start from Crawley Road at the bottom of the map. The Reynolds House is one of the oldest houses in the city and is open to the public. It's on the north side of Crawley Road next to the footpath that leads to the public gardens. The area is particularly interesting for its unusual sculptures. The thumb is just what its name suggests, but it's about 10 metres high. You'll see it on Hill Road, across the road from the bank. The museum's got a particularly fine collection of New Zealand landscapes. It's on the east side of the sheep market, on City Road. It's on the other side of the road from the public gardens, immediately facing the junction with Hill Road. The Contemporary Art Gallery is on a little road that leads off Station Square, not far from the public gardens. The road ends at the gallery. It doesn't go anywhere else. That's open every day, except Mondays. The Warner Gallery specialises in 19th century art. It's on City Road, near the junction with Crawley Road, on the same side of the road as the public gardens. It's open on weekdays from 9 to 5, and entry is free. Finally, if you're interested in purchasing high-quality artwork, the place to go is Nucleus. You need to go from Crawley Road up through Station Square and east along Hill Road until you get to a small winding road turning off. Go up there, and it's on your right. If you get to City Road, you've gone too far. That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 15 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 15 to 20. Now let me give you some idea of the layout of the farm. The building where you bought your tickets is the new barn immediately to your right. And we're now at the beginning of the main path to the farmland. And of course, the car park is on your left. The scarecrow you can see in the car park in the corner beside the main path, is a traditional figure for keeping the birds away from crops. But our scarecrow is a permanent sculpture. It's taller than a human being, so you can see it from quite a distance. If you look ahead of you, you'll see a maze. It's opposite the new barn, beside the side path that branches off to the right, just over there. The maze is made out of hedges which are too tall for young children to see over them, but it's quite small so you can't get lost in it. Now can you see the bridge crossing the fish pool further up the main path? If you want to go to the cafe, go towards the bridge and turn right just before it. Walk along the side path and the cafes on the first bend you come to. The building was originally the schoolhouse, and it's well over a hundred years old. 
As you may know, we run skills workshops here, where you can learn traditional crafts like woodwork and basket making. You can see examples of the work and talk to someone about the courses in the Black Barn. If you take the side path to the right, here, just by the new barn, you'll come to the Black Barn, just where the path first bends. Now, I mustn't forget to tell you about picnicking, as I can see some of you have brought your lunch with you. You can picnic in the field, though do clear up behind you, of course. Or if you'd prefer a covered picnic area, there's one near the farmyard, just after you cross the bridge. There's a covered picnic spot on the right. And the last thing to mention is Fiddy House itself. From here you can cross the bridge, then walk along the footpath through the field to the left of the farmyard. That goes to the house, and it'll give you a lovely view of it. It's certainly worth a few photographs, but as it's a private home, I'm afraid you can't go inside. Right, well, if you're all ready, we'll set off on our tour of the farm. That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. Now, a word about the layout of the building. The auditorium, stage and dressing rooms for the actors are all below ground level. Here on the ground floor, we have most of the rooms that the public doesn't see. The majority are internal, so they have windows in the roof to light them. Standing here in the foyer, you're probably wondering why the box office isn't here, where the public would expect to find it. Well, you might have noticed it on your way in. Although it's part of this building, it's next door, with a separate entrance from the road. For the theatre manager's office, you go across the foyer and through the double doors. Turn right, and it's the room at the end of the corridor with the door on the left. The lighting box is where the computerised stage lighting is operated and it's at the back of the building. When you're through the double doors, turn left, turn right at the water cooler and right again at the end. It's the second room along that corridor. The lighting box has a window into the auditorium, which of course is below us. The artistic director's office is through the double doors, turn right, and it's the first room you come to on the right-hand side. And finally, for the moment, the room where I'll take you next, the relaxation room. So, if you'd like to come with me... That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. OK, that was something about the collections, and now here's some more practical information, in case you need it. Most of the museum facilities are downstairs in the basement, so you go down the stairs here. 
When you reach the bottom of the stairs, you'll find yourself in a sitting area with comfortable chairs and sofas where you can have a rest before continuing your exploration of the museum. We have a very good restaurant which serves excellent food all day in a relaxing atmosphere. To reach it, when you get to the bottom of the stairs, go straight ahead to the far side of the sitting area, then turn right into the corridor. You'll see the door of the restaurant facing you. If you just want a snack or if you'd like to eat somewhere with facilities for children, we also have a cafe. When you reach the bottom of the stairs, you'll need to go straight ahead, turn right into the corridor, and the cafe is immediately on the right. And talking about children, there are baby changing facilities downstairs. Cross the sitting area, continue straight ahead along the corridor on the left, and you and your baby will find the facilities on the left hand side. The cloak room, where you should leave coats, umbrellas, and any large bags, is on the left hand side of the sitting area. It's through the last door before you come to the corridor. There are toilets on every floor, but in the basement, they're the first rooms on the left when you get down there. Okay. Now, if you've got anything to leave in the cloakroom, please do that now, and then we'll start our tour. That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you will have some time to look at the questions 15 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 15 to 20. OK. Group B, your turn. Does everyone have a copy of the plan? Oh, great. OK. We'll all be meeting in the car park. That's on the bottom of the plan. See? Now, if you've been assigned to the vegetable beds, to get there, you go out of the car park and go up the footpath until you reach the circle of trees. There they are, in the middle of the plan. And you see that the footpath goes all the way around them. Well, on the left-hand side of that circular footpath, there's a short track which takes you directly to the vegetable beds. You can see a bamboo fence marked just above them. All right. OK. If you're helping out with the beehives, pay attention. Look again at the circle of trees in the middle of the plan and the footpath that goes around them. On the right side of that circle, you can see that the footpath goes off in an easterly direction, heading towards the right-hand side of the plan. And then... The path splits into two and you can either go up or down. You want the path that heads down. And at the end of this, you see two areas divided by a bamboo fence. And as we're looking at the plan, the beehives are on the right of the fence. The smaller section, I mean. Now, don't worry, all the bees have been removed. You just need to transport the hives back to the car park. OK. For the seating, look at the circular footpath. At the top of it, there's a path that goes from there and takes you up to the seating area, alongside the bicycle track and with a good view of the island, I suppose. OK, if you're volunteering for the Adventure Playground area, let's start from the car park again and go up the footpath, but then you want the first left turn. Go up there 
and then you see there's a short path that goes off to the right. Go down there, and that's the adventure playground area, above the bamboo fence. That fence does need repairing, I'm afraid. Right. What else? Oh yes, the sand area. We've got that circular footpath in the middle. Find the track that goes east, towards the right-hand side of the plan, and where that track divides, you need the little path that goes up towards the bicycle track. The sand area is just above the bamboo fence there, and finally, the pond area. So. It's on the left-hand side of your plan, towards the top, just above the fruit bushes, and to the left of the little path. Okay, as I said already, hopefully we'll be. You now have half a minute to check your answers. You will hear a tourist information officer explaining local walks to visitors. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to fifteen. Welcome to everyone here. I hope you enjoy your stay in our village, and enjoy the local scenery. I'll tell you a bit about the forest and mountain tracks in a minute, but first, I'll just give you an idea of where everything is in the village. So, we're here in the tourist information center, and when you come out of the center, you're on Willow Lane, just opposite the pond. If you want to get to the supermarket for your supplies of food and water, go right. That's the quickest way, and then turn right at the top of Willow Lane, and it's the second building you come to, opposite the old railway station. If you're planning on doing some serious climbing, and you need some equipment, we do have an excellent climbing supply store just five minutes walk away. Turn left once you're outside the tourist information center. Take Willow Lane all the way up to Pine Street. You want to go left along here. Then keep walking and go up Mountain Road on your right until you come to the next turning on the left. Head down there, and you'll come to the climbing supply store. If you get to the small building that sells ski passes, you'll know you've gone too far. You also need to head to Pine Street for the museum. It's small, but well worth a visit if you're interested in the history of the village and the old gold mining industry. So, when you reach Pine Street from here, you'll see the old railway line on the other side of the road. Turn left into Pine Street, and keep going until you come to Mountain Road. And just past here, the museum will be on your left. Just behind the railway line, don't worry about crossing over the tracks. The train stopped running through here in 1985. If you're planning on following one of the easier forest walks, you might like to hire a bicycle. To get to the hire shop, again, you need to head to Pine Street. On the left-hand side of Pine Street, you'll see the town hall. Go down the little road that you come to just before it, and you'll find the bike hire shop just behind the hall. They have a good range of bikes, so I'm sure you'll find something that suits your needs. Last but not least, if you're hungry after a long day's trek, I can recommend our local cafe. Again, when you leave the tourist information center, turn right. And follow Willow Lane until it joins Pine Street. 
and right opposite, on the far side of the railway tracks, is the café. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you will have some time to look at the questions 17 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. Now, let me just tell you a bit about what you can see in the sculpture park. If you look at your map, you'll see the visitor centre, where we are now, at the bottom, just by the entrance. Since we only have an hour, you might not be able to get right around the park, but you can choose to visit some of the highlights. You might like to take a look at the Joe Tremaine sculptures, which are displayed on this side of the upper lake, just behind the education centre and near the bridge. They're really impressive, but please remember not to let your children climb on them. One of our most popular exhibitions is the Giorgio Catalucci bird sculptures. They're just across the bridge on the north side of the lower lake. I love the way they're scattered around in the long grass beside the lake, looking as if they're just about to take to their wings. You could also go to the garden gallery. It's on this side of the upper lake. From the visitor centre, you go to the education centre, then keep on along the path and you'll see it on your right. There's an exhibition of animal carvings there which is well worth a look. We also have the Longhouse. That's quite a walk. From here, you go to the bridge and then turn left on the other side. Soon you'll see a winding pathway going up towards the northern boundary of the park. Go up there and you'll find it at the top. They have some abstract metal sculptures that are well worth seeing if you have time. OK, well, now... if. You're... You will hear the head of a centre which offers evening classes for adults. She is explaining some recent changes which have been made to the centre. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Hello. As some of you know, I'm Elaine Marriott, the head of the college's Learning Resource Centre. We've invited all of you taking evening classes and leisure activities to come and see the changes we've made to the centre in the last month. One major change we've made here on the ground floor is to the layout, as you can see from looking around you. I'm sure you'll recognise the desk. That's still in the same place as it has to be just inside the door. But you'll see that there are now periodicals on the shelves in the corner behind the desk. We've brought them nearer the entrance because so many people like to come in just to read magazines. We now stock a far wider range of periodicals than we used to, so we've decided to separate them from newspapers. This means the newspapers are now just the other side of the stairs, near the study area. Now, another thing is that we've brought the computers downstairs. People used to complain about having to go upstairs to use them. So, they're now at the far side of the building on the right, in the corner overlooking the car park. We've now got an extra photocopier. So, as well as the one upstairs, there's one down here. You can see it right opposite the entrance, by the wall on the far side. The 
biggest change, though, and one I'm sure many of you will welcome, is that we now have a cafe at last. We've been asking for one for years. If you turn right as soon as you get past the desk, you'll see the door ahead of you. It became possible to have a cafe because the building has been extended, and we've now got a new office and storeroom area. What else should I tell you about before we walk round? Oh yes, we've had so many requests for books on sport that we've bought a lot more, and they're all together immediately to the right of the entrance.